Good morning. Um, Namaskar. Namaskar. Today is May the 6th, Friday, 2011. And uh, I'm speaking with uh, Mr. Arish Shahani. Uh, Mr. Shahani, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, regarding, uh, I'm a basically mechanical engineer by profession. Okay. I left uh, India in 1971, okay. came to the United States, and then in 1972 I got into a business, luckily, okay. and the last 39 years I'm in this business, I'm very happy, okay. and very successful in my way. Yeah, we know. <laughs> yes. And uh, these uh, last, and I consider uh, being in America was the best thing which happened to me. Good. And I consider America as a heaven on earth. Good. And I feel that uh, this is a country which follows more than human philosophy. Okay. Because we believe in everybody should have a right to live, express themselves and freedom. So that's the beauty of this country and being Hindu, I love this place. Yeah. And uh, now, um, what, what, what is your place of birth? See, I was born in an area in Pakistan, right now in Pakistan, called Rawalpindi. 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 So you are a, you are basically are you a Punjabi Hindu? I'm Punjabi Hindu. Okay. Did you have do you when did you migrate to India or under what circumstance? See, when partition was declared mm -hmm. and uh, people were very confused in those days mm -hmm. whether to leave or not to leave, mm -hmm. whether they can live there, I cannot live there. So naturally my father being in the business in the Adawal Pindi and he used to travel all the way to the Kabul and Iran and my father was a very young energetic man and he was in clothing business okay. and um, he used to travel all over places mm -hmm. and he used to speak Pashto and other languages uh, because uh, when you do business you have to know the mm -hmm. languages. So my father was very not sure to whether he should leave this place or not mm -hmm. because we had ancestors home mm -hmm. and everything like that. But when uh, his own friend came to kill him, oh. Muslim friend, really? then he had to change his mind. So, so um, uh, what was it before 47 or after 47? After 47. After. Because he, as I said, you know, uh, when 1947 took place at Partition, mm -hmm. everybody thought that they can live where they are, you know. Yeah. But when they made situation for Hindus very difficult, mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, when yes. my father's close friend came to kill him, That's really that tough. changed his mind. Yes. Now, uh, how old were you approximately? I was around four, four years old, but uh, I still have very vague memories Memory. that how I was young. And, uh, you know, we had Muslim uh, servants and mm -hmm. they used to take care of me mm -hmm. and they will take me for a walk and mm -hmm. my mother will be there, my father mm -hmm. there. And, so, you know, I have a really big memory and the beautiful thing is after partition when we came to India, my father is often talk about the stories of Pakistan, how okay. he used to live there, yes. how beautiful that place was, mm -hmm. how people, uh, there was no much difference between Hindus and Muslims, mm -hmm. they used to consider them as the brothers mm -hmm. and my father used to tell me, you know, uh, people are not bad, mm -hmm. it's their karmas who are bad. Okay. <laughs> but of course, that, that karma then has very permanent and long-term effect. That means you are you are displaced. Uh, you are not there in your homeland yes. uh, originally where you are you are from. Now, how 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 do you know how long they, did they live in Rawalpindi? How many? Oh, years? Our, we, our forefather, many generations many, we were there. Many many generations. And uh, as I said, that I sometimes feel very proud of my father and our ancestors mm -hmm. that they remain Hindus. Okay. And I used to question my father, how could you be there with among so many Muslims and remain Hindus? Mm -hmm. He says all these Muslims were there, they were Hindus before. Mm -hmm. So they were not Muslim before, but, mm -hmm. but uh, I say, oh, why you didn't become Muslim? Mm -hmm. He says because their way of life and our way of life is very different. Okay. We are very clean and they are not very clean. I said, okay. what do you mean by clean? He said their way of living is very different than our living. Okay. And uh, many Hindus who don't like that kind of living, they didn't change. Oh, yeah. Now, did you? Um, but you're very young. So, do you have any memory of your of the migration? I, I think I have very vague memory, and, and my memory became more strong memory because when my father came back to India mm -hmm. and we got all displaced, mm -hmm. we had to talk about it. Yes. And I remember till age uh, 12, 14, my father will talk about the stories of India. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, then all these stories faded away because we got busy with our college, yeah, yeah, schools, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. But that imprint is still there because yeah. he used to tell how beautiful the Rao Pindi was there, how was our house, yeah. how it was two stories. We used to go in the balcony and play, mm -hmm. how I had a Muslim servant who would take me around. And then how I'll go to the shops of my relatives, and they'll give, me, they'll, and always my father will keep some uh, what call uh, almonds in my pocket because I love almonds. So I used to okay. eat in the. Okay. <laughs> so these are little how memories. Many, how yeah. many brothers and sisters you have? See, I had one elder sister mm -hmm. uh, when we were in Pakistan, and then we had four other children who were born in India. In, in India, okay. We had and six bro brothers and sisters. Yeah. So what do you, what about your other uncles and aunts? See, Uncle Ons, when we got uh, displaced, mm -hmm. then everybody was running all around. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, as my fathers and uh, my metal uncles, we sit down and talk stories when mm -hmm. they were living in Bombay. Mm -hmm. uh, our family was at Indore. Mm -hmm. My buas means my brother, my father's sisters yes. were in Bareilly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all got displaced yes, here and there. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, each was looking for some support. Mm -hmm. My father got support from his own brother, so mm -hmm. he moved to Indore. My uh, what do you call uh, metal? Uh, my uh, my father, uh, or grandfather mm -hmm. from my mother's side. He got support from his brother. He was settled in Bombay, so he moved there. Uh, my buas they moved to Bareilly because uh, somebody moved to Bareilly and they supported. Yeah, yeah. See, people moved when the part they found. When yeah. partition took place, some people were able to escape early. Some yeah. people escaped later. Yeah, yeah. When they escaped early, they moved depending on what government sent them. Mm -hmm. Then they were looking for their relatives all around. Mm -hmm. So they will come to the camps, they will, and the camp will help them where their relatives are. You know, somehow yeah. things worked out, and uh, so we got... Right, right, right. Where you are. Now, um, would you know that, uh, that, did you ever visit back to... No. My father will never like to go back because he doesn't trust Muslims anymore and he just told me many times that you can trust a person but cannot trust his way of life, mm -hmm. which they are doctrine and Muslims are doctrine to not to tell you the truth at any time. Okay. So he says whenever you deal with the Muslim, just listen to him but don't trust. Okay. Now, now of course, Prabhupada Pindi has a lot of beautiful temples. I, I still remember we visited it. Um, many years ago, but of course, of course, they are all nobody. Nobody practices it. Those buildings, in some buildings, people still live there. That is, but but this there is no Hindu is there anymore. See, uh, as you will find, wherever the Muslim majority is there, the minority cannot survive. Okay, that is a proven fact. Yeah, okay, but uh, then then I'll come to that. Um, now, when you came to India. Uh, you, you said what towns they lived first? See, first of all, from Rawal Pindi when we left place because when my, as I said, uh, his own friend to kill him and he, my father begged him, please leave me alone. And when he left him alone, then the same person came to kill my father. My father's other Hindu friend was coming and when the call of Allah Akbar came, that person who had a knife in his hand to kill my father used the same knife to kill my father's friend. Mm. And my father's mind then changed. My father had a gun and everything like that. But uh, I said, why didn't you use it? He says, if I used it, I would have been dead again. Okay. Now, okay. So we went from Rawalpindi to Mujaffar Nagar. Then. Okay, Mujaffar Nagar in? In Pakistan again. Pakistan. And then Mujaffar Nagar, he stayed because he knew some Muslim friends there too. Yeah. They helped him to get out of the country then. Because he so, gave them the money, he gave them his own gun to them, as uh, you know, did gift you, to did them. You, do, you, do you recall? Did you walk? Did you take oh, a car? Did you take no, a no, car? no, no, there's no car, nothing. I think most of the people used to always, always running. Okay. Uh, they will just find a night time, or uh, they will look for who is going where, or uh, they will take a shelter in the temple. Most of the people took shelter in the temples actually. Okay. And uh, somebody will come and give the information, okay, now time to go. Okay. And then the people will take in batches of five, ten, and move around. Because all these stories become very well known to me when we will sit down and talk about it after the partition. Because my mamas were of my age, you know, yeah. my mama was my age. Because in those days, my mother said that she was pregnant and her mother was pregnant at the yeah, same yeah, time. Yeah, that was not, that was not common. <laughs> yes. Just the kids used to, girls used to get married as a teenager. Yes. And so, but they used to have 
kids yeah. when they're yeah. and thirties and forties, their mothers are going. Yeah. So, uh, so it's what was your mother's reaction? Uh, do you know? Do you recall? See, my mother still remembers. You know that uh, they they had good help at the time when they, they were there because the Hindus were mostly affluent. Hindus were mostly smart. Hindus were most in business, and Hindus were mostly uh, versatile. You know. Like uh, if I asked father what business you are, he says we used to get merchandise all the way from much Madhya Pradesh, mm -hmm. cotton, and mm -hmm. we used to sell in Kabul and mm -hmm. go all other places because Hindus mm -hmm. are a good planner and mm -hmm. good thinker. And, and, uh, but there were peasants too, yeah. weren't they? There were a lot of yeah. peasants in 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 farmers also yeah. in in Punjab. Yes. Those were Hindus. Who were as, as my father says, you know, they, they, these all were Hindus before they got converted. Our forefathers were very strong mm -hmm. and they didn't get converted because they didn't like that way of yeah. life. Now, from Mujaffar Nagar, where did you come? Then I think we came to, if I'm not wrong, we went to Surat. Oh, but that's a long journey, Surat yes. in Gujarat. Gujarat. So. And my father stayed in Surat for a year or something like that. And uh, then from there, when he came to know his brother is there in Dor, mm -hmm. then he moved to Dindor. Indore. So you grew up in Indore? Yes, I grew up. So, but then in Indore, uh, then, then, do you speak any Punjabi or you? Oh yes, I uh, do Punjabi, and but, then we, we are, but, when we are Indore, then we learn Hindi. Hindi, yes, and, then, uh, and you learn. Uh, Punjabi also. Punjabi at home. Punjabi at home was there. My mother still speak Punjabi and mm -hmm. Hindi, but you know, uh, but we never learned the script. We never learned uh, to write mm -hmm. because uh, when we went to school, schools were all Hindi schools. Yes, 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 yes. So we lost more or less that uh, yeah. language. Language, yeah. Now, um, how did your father survive? That means my, your bad, your uncle's support See, financial. Oh, see, there, there was always a little support in one way or another that they will give you the, you know, food uh, items and things like that. But the main thing is my father had a very strong principles mm -hmm. of life, you know. And he, uh, and even at this age when he was 70, 80, he used to learn the same uh, stanzas, you know, all the time. He said, you are what you eat. Mm -hmm. He was very particular, so he will make sure that you eat the right kind of food. What is his name? His name was Krishan Lal Sahan. Krishan. What's your mother's name? Motiya Devi Sahan. Motiya Devi. Now your mother is still uh, alive. Alive, right? My well, yeah. father had a good life. He, he was uh, older than my mother uh, mm -hmm. by almost uh, seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. And uh, he passed away at age 85. And were in India or here? Uh, he used to come here and okay. spend some time with us, but uh, he passed away in India. And, 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 and at that time, where did he live? What uh, in city? Indoor, okay. Once we moved to Indore, we never moved out. So did Indore. you did you buy a house? Uh, oh yes, we got a nice house in uh, India. We used to live in a what you call rental place. Mm -hmm. Then my father got he was working for somebody. Then he got into business. Mm -hmm. He made some money. I became an engineer. Mm -hmm. I working. I was working Tata. Then mm -hmm. I came in the United States. Then I helped them to build the house. Sure, sure. I mean that's that's a really really good success story. I mean, so there are many success stories. Yeah, if you ask me, my buas are doing very, very well. They got many farms in Bareilly. They are big cultivators. Mm -hmm. and they have uh, restaurants. They have uh, uh, shops. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything like that. My my father's brother, which is my uncle, mm -hmm. he had a big business. And you know, we, everybody did very well because more or less uh, Indians, Hindus, are having a vision for the future. They want to see the children are well educated. Like my father had mm -hmm. six children. He never went to school mm -hmm. other than going to four fifth class. Yeah. But we were all in college. Mm -hmm. uh, I became engineer. My brother is graduate. My sister is a uh, MA. My other sister is a BA and BD. And then my other two sisters mm -hmm. are graduates. So, you know, we all give yes, up. Yes. So it's a struggle and survived. You yeah. know, that's the story. Um, did by any chance did government? of India give you any help in terms of settling? See, my father talked about this thing very much uh, time to time and he said that uh, they were always saying that we will compensate you for the losses which you had and it was a very long process. It took many years, maybe about eight years to collect maybe 5,000 rupees, okay. uh, something like but that. But what about in from Pakistan? What happened to your property there? It's all gone. Any, uh, you know, did, did you know who took it over? And did you get any compensation? See, when we come, when you left 
Pakistan, you wanted to survive. Mm -hmm. You had no time to think about all those right, things. Right. No, no, I'm saying, yeah. did Pakistan government give you any compensation? I don't think they will uh, give you. They robbed you. No, 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 but, but, but that's the, when they uh, rob you, they yeah. give you something. Yeah. But do you know of anybody was harmed because of Yes, the my father tells me a story when they were running away and my middle uncle tells me a story they were running away. They are looking to get a bus, a train, but when the trains will come, they will all butcher trains and sometimes the trains will have all bodies and then they will run away from the station because they don't know what to do. And uh, they saw all those things. My father, as I said, uh, he saw it from in front of his own eyes, mm -hmm. his own friend getting killed by his Muslim friend. Mm -hmm. And that was totally uh, not acceptable to him at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, now uh, <clears throat> in India, uh, did you ever feel, feel felt uh, discriminated or did you ever feel that, that you are a refugee because you are treated differently? I don't think so because we were in Hindu majority area. You know. okay. We were not in the, 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 They majority. didn't see you as a Hindu then. Uh, they saw you as a Hindu. I'm sorry. Yeah, they didn't see you as a as a different person. No, no, but I, part part no, of the. No, I I think Hindus are very great uh, people in one way or another. They accept anybody. If you look at the history of India, mm -hmm. I think that that uh, that sense of uh, uh, openness and uh, is still there. You know, mm -hmm. so that's the reason when we moved in Dhar, we went to living in one area to another area to another area and we had no problem, we were living with them and uh, yeah. we had friends and everybody. Um, have you ever thought why, for example, um, almost all, all minority Hindus are gone from Pakistan but not from India? What, what, what no, is I think it is. That is, all the minority Hindus from Pakistan, they had to leave. And, oh, yes. But, but not Muslims from India. I think the reason is very simple, you know, I tell you even uh, when we left uh, Pakistan and my father had a bad experience with Muslims, but my father was still dealing with Muslims in, with business, in business. And uh, he used to tell me only people are not bad, but only think their culture is bad, their uh, thinking is bad, but, but, but then he couldn't live with them bad. Though, But again, as I say, he never thought people are bad. Okay. It's their way of life is bad. And when we are Hindu majority and they are minorities, they don't create problems. Okay. Only when they become majority, they create problems. Why so? Have you thought why so? I think it is been, they are taught to do that. Because my, when, when my father asked the guy, why are you want to kill me? We are friends, we grew together. He says when the call comes, we have to do it. But, but then, then when they are minority, they don't do it? Because the call is not there. Okay. It becomes... The call becomes when they are 50, 51 percent, that is, they are just the majority. I don't know, maybe it's 51 or 41. Well, I'm asking you because <laughs> I, you live through I, I have no idea, but they get a call, you know. Yeah. Um, so, but, I, but you already told me that, that uh, do you know of any Punjabi Hindu that stayed back in, in, in Pakistan? Not to our knowledge, not to my father's knowledge, because okay. were, every, my father said some people even left in 1948. Uh, thinking that they can live there, but they could not live there, so came back. So he had some friends who came back late also. Oh, I mean, yeah, 48, 48, 48, 49. Like, uh, yeah. I think at the time maybe it was uh, evil, but some people got stuck. They got stuck. Yeah. Because I read some stories uh, in India today, I think, that uh, when they did a survey after 25 years or 30 years, and I used to read all these magazines. Actually, uh, my yeah. magazines, I, see, I was surprised that uh, one brother living in India is Hindu, another brother living in Pakistan is a, is a Muslim. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah, that was the 50th anniversary that yeah. India today did a study. Uh, and I read yeah. all those articles, they were shocking. Yeah, there were women who were... Because they had no option to live in Pakistan only to they become Muslim. Yeah, uh, yeah. That was really, really. Um, uh, now, um, <clears throat> what do you think? Um, now, when people ask you, "What's your country?" Of course, you. What's your nationality? You say American, but do you do you ever say that your you, 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 your root is in Pakistan? No, I say I'm Hindu. Hindu. And, I, and I, I, I never talked about Pakistan anymore because you know if you talk about Pakistan, you'd be hated. <laughs> yeah. So, but but do you say you're from India? I say I'm from India, yeah. and I say I'm Hindu. Yes. See, a lot of people get confused here, you know, because we all look alike. Yes. If you look at Pakistan, look at me, there's no difference. Okay. Only thing when he changes his dress, he yeah. looks different. Yeah. And uh, our dialogue is same, everything is same, and more or less 
food habits are same, mm-hmm. but uh, you know, but uh, upbringing is different. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm almost almost to the uh, uh, to the end. Um, <clears throat> do you think here? Do you think? Uh, do you ever socialize with Muslims? Oh yes, I have friends Muslim, and uh, as I tell that, as I tell you before, also I tell you again, uh, Hinduism teaches us we are human beings. And we should not hate human beings. Mm-hmm. We should hate their mm-hmm. karmas. Mm-hmm. And I think I've practiced that. I don't hate any Muslim, but I hate their way of living, the way they think, but, the way they. But think. how do you separate that too? I am curious to See, know. See, I I generally talk to a Muslim and tell them, you know, why you're doing that. Mm-hmm. And what do they say? But they have a, they lie. They cannot tell the truth because they are not taught to tell, tell the truth. But, but they may say say the same thing about Hindus. See, it's, it's, it's for a, a third person has to make a judgment. Yeah. See, 1400 years, let me tell you, 1400 years, today there are 58 Islamic nations. Mm-hmm. In those 58 Islamic nations, all culture of their ancestors is gone. Mm-hmm. Now these Muslims who are living in that country, they cannot accept any minority. Look, Christians, how they're getting killed, how the Hindus are getting killed, how all old structures are destroyed, how the in Afghanistan, these Muslims are destroyed, the Buddha, Buddha is so big, we yeah. are made by their forefathers. So this culture teaches them to not to believe in their roots at all, okay. when you get converted. Mm-hmm. And when you get converted, then they are taught to kill anybody who is not a Muslim. So it's a problem. It's a problem of the teaching. How, how are you going to solve it? No, we can't solve it. So? We can solve it. And this, this will go on and on and on till somebody who comes up with a very clear, clear decision that these people cannot live with other people. So they had to be segregated, separated. They should be given a separate place to live. And no Muslim should be allowed to live, come to the other areas. Maybe the peace will prevail. That, that would be like apartheid, but that may not be possible. No, why is possible? Okay. When Muslim doesn't want to live with any Hindu hmm. or a Christian, why you should be allowed to live? Okay, I mean, but they come to you because of some they have a doctrine. If they want to convert you, they want to take your daughters to get married to them. Their daughters cannot marry you, but they will love to get married to your daughters so that they can become a Muslim and then they can have Muslim children. Then they will convert you. They they have a very good operation going on, uh, but uh, let's see what future brings to us. Okay. Now, um, is there anything else that I didn't ask you like to add? See, I will just say that uh, we Hindus have survived because of two three simple religions and because we were big in numbers, but we are losing ground now. We have lost Afghanistan, we lost uh, Pakistan, we lost uh, Bangladesh. Bangladesh, we lost uh, uh, no, uh, Burma is gone, Mali. Hindu majority areas like Indonesia, Malaysia is gone, so we are losing ground. And again, the way division takes place in 1947, sometimes I wonder it will happen again in India. And it is very unfortunate that we don't have a Hindu leaders who can have a vision of that. And maybe we never had it because we believe in individual moksha. And we, we, we think the soul is born again and again, and our life is to enlighten ourselves. So we are not community minded, we are not uh, big family minded, or we are nation minded. Look at India, Hindus, one billion Hindus that don't have a single country of their own. Mm-hmm. Well, 1.3 million Muslims have 58 countries. Mm-hmm. Christians, 1.5 billion may have maybe 100 countries. So why Hindus don't have a leader? Why don't Hindu leaders have a vision of having Hindu nation, Hindu constitution, Hindu safety is surprising. When a Muslim, Hindus is getting killed in Bangladesh, or Kashmir, or in Pakistan, or in Indonesia, or Malaysia, no Hindu cares, no Hindu thinks about it. India government never talks about it because they consider they are secular. Well, if Muslim gets into trouble, the whole Indian government awakens up. It's, it's very mind-boggling. Um, so, um, um, yeah, and uh, I, I really appreciate your, you sharing your, your ideas of transition, and uh, with that, um, thank you, thank you very much thank for you coming.